Dragon, you hoser, <laughs> you better puff and pass. Carol de Rivier here. What say you, Dragon? Good luck on the path. We just going to get silly, bitches. Today is the day in the house where we will put up all of our Christmas decorations. I already pulled them down from the attic. But everyone in the house is still asleep, which gives me some time to make some videos. And since I'm feeling in the Christmas spirit, look, I put up my own little mini Christmas tree. Uh, I wanted to talk about some Christmas albums that I absolutely adore. How's it going, folks? Welcome back to the Dragon's Den. I'm Dragon, or Great Stoned Dragon, if you're not into the whole brevity thing. I just finished my morning wake and bake, and I am feeling alive in the Christmas spirit. Uh, I put on some Christmas music softly upstairs, so when, as everybody wakes up, that'll be just kind of like emanating Christmas spirit into the house. And it got me thinking... Man, what albums am I going to queue up for Christmas season this year? Because I have a lot of the same ones that I look forward to listening to every year. So I started listing them down in my head and thought, let's talk about it. One of the first ones that came to mind is a classic. And, and I have a lot of nostalgic memory for it. My mom actually found this band when I was in elementary school uh, and, and just came home one day and just was like, we're going to see Trans-Siberian Orchestra. And, and she took us to go see them one one year for Christmas. And it was almost like a life-changing experience. I'd never been to anything like that. And seeing the laser light show and hearing this, like the, the shreddy guitars was freaking uh, surreal to my little, little brain. The first album or set of albums, I should say, is kind of a tie uh, between Christmas Eve and the, Lost, uh, and the Lost Christmas Eve. Both of those albums by Trans-Siberian Orchestra are fantastic. And they have some tracks that we all know because they get played on the radio now or have been for years, and so that's super familiar. Plus, like, The Office has an episode that uses Trans-Siberian Orchestra. So we all know, right? I couldn't really pick between the two. They were both, like, riddled with good tracks. So thanks, Mom. Speaking of my mother, I'm going to pick another track that I grew up listening to in the house every Christmas because she loved The Carpenters, A Christmas Portrait. This one's from 1978. My mom loved Karen Carpenter. Uh, and now I love Karen Carpenter because my mom used to try to like sing like Karen Carpenter. And so they, and she had, did a pretty dang good job. So she sounded very similar in her singing voice. And then as I got older and I became a drummer, I found out that Karen Carpenter is like an amazing drummer. She's a maniac on the kit, singing and playing at the same time. And she can just tear it the fuck up. Really sucks that she's not with us anymore and that she went out the way that she did. It's very sad. So we love you, Karen. R.I.P. But the album is great. It's a, you know, it, it's a blast from the past here from the, from 78. Uh, but it's, I grew up listening to it. So I will probably be listening to it every Christmas until I die. Another album that's similar to that. I grew up hearing in the house all the time was a Charlie Brown Christmas. That album is like the best Christmas jazz you can find out there. It's so smooth and wholesome. And then, and then when you hear the typical Peanuts music start coming on, it's just like, oh, this is the best. Every Christmas, I can just put this album on repeat and just leave it playing in the house just to put out that vibe. Um, and it's great. It's such a good album to just have on to set the Christmas spirit. And a lot of it is instrumental, too. Um, I've found that as I've gotten older and I've heard like the, the sung Christmas songs over and over and over and over and over again, I think I'm starting to prefer like the 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 musical side of the Christmas albums. So Charlie Brown Christmas is perfect for that. But now my wife has introduced me to another like jazzy Christmas album, which I've never listened to Nora Jones, but she really enjoys Nora Jones' I Dream of Christmas. So I've heard that album front to back multiple times now. And I got to say, it's grown on me. It has grown on me. She's got a, a phenomenal voice and, and it's got a lot of that, that smooth jazz, which is fun to listen to when I'm just stoned off my ass, much like right now, dude. I'm baked. Wake and Bake's hit different. Putting it in reverse, Terry, we're going to back it back up to another metal album. When we think metal Christmas, if you're not going Trans-Siberian Orchestra, most likely you're going to Carol of the Bells by August Prince Red. Matt Griner tears the kit up in this, and I remember hearing it for the first time. My mind was blown. It still holds up today. It's fantastic listening to Matt play Carol of the Bells. August Prince Red can really shred some freaking Christmas songs. So they put out an album called Sledding Hill, which has... Basically, Carol of the Bells times like 15. You got 15 tracks of just awesome, awesome metal Christmas covers. Frosty the Snowman's on there. Other stuff is on there. I'm too high to remember what else is on there right now. But all of it's great, and it's awesome if you're looking for a metal Christmas edge. You know, you want to get that stank face while you're driving to work, and it's cold and almost Christmas time, and you're trying to fight the, the Christmas blues. 
use August Burns Red. And lastly, I think I say my favorite for last because it just, it hits you out of nowhere. And I promise you, if you try this album, it's hard to hate. It's so good. It has a very unique vibe for a Christmas album. And that is 2007 Reliant K, Let It Snow, Baby, Let It Rain, Dear. It's so good. It's catchy. It's witty. It's clever. But overall, it's just phenomenally well-written. The first track that they kick off with, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, is such a unique spin. And then it just kicks into like some punk, some like punk rock edge that's just fantastic. They do a lot of covers of songs that you're familiar with, as well as throwing in some originals that are just great. This one I look forward to every Christmas. Like, oh man, I'm going to go into debt again. Oh wait, I get to listen to that Reliant K Christmas album. Life is good, man. Life is good. These are just some of my favorite Christmas albums. I know I probably missed some that I love that I just didn't put out here because I was stoned when I was thinking of this list and I was stoned when I was shooting this video like, you know, right now. And I want to be stoned when I'm editing it. So things can just kind of fall through the cracks, but we're having a good time. If you have any Christmas albums that you absolutely adore or any Christmas songs that you love, that you love put them in the comments or you could go talk about them in the Discord. Link tree in the description. That's the best way for us to, you know, gab about Christmas songs. I love talking music, man. I also really love that you took the time to hang out with me today. I really appreciate that. That's super cool. So hit the subscribe button so you can come hang out with me again in another video. There's also like a shit ton of other videos on the channel already. So feel free to peruse at your leisure. I'm going to go shoot some more videos and smoke some more pot about it. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Dragon of Bites. <laughs>